Today in conversation, we have with us Dr. Khurshid Alam Khan. Dr. Khan is presently working as an assistant professor at the College of Horticulture, Mansour of Rajmata Vijayaraje Sindhya Agricultural University, Gwalior, Madhya Pradesh. He is also working as member of the state level technical institution committee for the Pradhan Mantri formalization of micro food processing enterprises scheme, also known as PMFME scheme, for horticulture and food processing department. Government of Madhya Pradesh. Sir, we welcome you for today's session on ultraviolet radiation based processing of fruits and vegetables. Uh, thank you for such a nice introduction. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, could you please tell us something about the ultraviolet treatment process? Yes, of course. Uh, if you see UV treatment, UV treatment is uh, basically a non thermal treatment uh, that can be used in food processing. And uh, it can be an alternative for the food processing industries compared to the uh, treatments like thermal treatments, means uh, treatment by using the heat. And uh, thermal treatments, uh, you know, that uh, it can cause adverse effects to food being processed on one hand. And on the other hand, uh, it also involves high energetic cost. So industries are also using the chemicals okay, for, during the processing. So if you see the consumer's opinion about the use of chemicals, uh, the processing is highly negative. Consumers don't want to see any chemical in their food. So uh, industries are using basically uh, to protect, uh, to extend the shelf life and to protect the food from food bomb pathogens and microorganisms. So overall we can say that consumers are becoming more aware about the uh, safety and nutritional profile of the food and beverages uh, want to consume. Uh, to meet the consumer's demand for healthier food, suitable processing technologies like uh, UV treatments uh, can be used in place of uh, thermal uh, treatments. So as a preservation method, ultraviolet light irradiation has a positive consumer image. And of course, it is of interest to the food industry also because it is a non-thermal method and it helps in nutritional preservation. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so, what would be the right dose of UV light treatment that has germicidal effect? Okay, very good question. First, uh, I think it's important to note the different types of uh, UV light. So, UV light can be uh, categorized on the basis of their wavelength. So, we can say UV light A, UV light B and UV light C. They are known as UV light A, UV light B, UV light C. Also, you can see in literature, they write like a UVA, UAB, and UVC. So their classification is basically on the basis of their wavelength. So UVA, UVA light has the longest wavelength. It means they are long waves of 320 to 400 nanometers. Uh, this type of wavelength is mainly responsible for the sunburn. You might have seen that, and it is uh, this type of UV light is uh, commonly linked with the skin cancer. The other one is UV light B. Uh, this is this one is the weaker than the UV light A, means having the uh, wavelength 280 to 320 nanometers. They are also known as medium wave. But from our discussion point of view and uh, from our processing point of view, so uh, if you see uh, from our discussion point of view, we see the third one that is the UV light C. UV light C that is also known as UVC has the shortest wavelength of 200 to 280 nanometer. And this type of radiation, if you see, it has already been used to uh, for the disinfection of the water to sanitize wastewater. According to FDA, UVC wavelength, that is 200 to 280 nanometer, uh, is uh, basically known as a germicidal range. And uh, it uh, has germicidal effect as it effectively inactivates the bacteria and viruses. And uh, it uh, basically uh, inactivation is mainly due to the DNA mutation that occurs when UV light is absorbed by the DNA molecules. So UVC can be used as it is lethal to most of the microorganisms. And the most important thing is that it leaves no residue in the treated food. Okay, sir. Uh, so, what exactly is the mechanism of ultraviolet light generation? Okay, very good question. So, as we know that 
atoms and ion emit light when they change from a higher energy state to lower energy state an atom and most of the ion consist of electrons uh, so the electron which are closest to the nucleus having a lower energy and the electrons away from the nucleus have high energy when electron makes a transition from a higher energy state to lower energy state it means when the electron is at the high energy state that time it is having in for example energy level e2 uh, when it transit from higher energy state to lower energy state and that time it is having energy e1 e1 the difference of e2 minus e1 that is uh, is released as a photon of light if the difference between energy level is significant or appropriate means the difference of e2 minus e2 appropriate the light emit that light is actually known as Uh, UV light, and this is the mechanism of UV light generation. Thank you so much, sir. What would you say would be the application of UV-based radiation when it comes to food processing? How can it be okay, okay. deployed there? So UV uh, it can be used as an alternative method for the traditional thermal processing, especially for the liquid foods. such as uh, it can be used for the treatment of the soft drinks and beverages and it can be used for the pasteurization of juices also for post lethality treatment for ready to eat meat uh, especially to control l monocytogens and other pathogens of concern in meat and poultry processing facilities it can be also used for self life extension of fresh fruits and vegetable and see other sites Uh, it can also be used for decontamination of the surfaces of the use uh, this uv light is that it can also be used for decontamination of the conveyor conveyor you might have seen that uh, in industry for transportation of material from one place to other place we use conveyor so for decontamination of the conveyor surfaces uh, it, it can be used it is also used for decontamination of the packaging material different type different types of films and foil and uh, the uh, if you see in our days the market for the minimally processed fruits and vegetables is increasing uh, in big cities you know that people don't have the time so they purchase uh, the minimally processed especially the vegetables and fruits so in case of minimally processed fruits uh, use of uvc light uh, helps to increase the level of polyphenols and flavonoids so thus by applying this type of radiation during the cutting process especially during the cutting process self life of minimally processed products can be improved thank you so much sir uh, for enlightening us with such insightful information uh, i am sure our viewers would have definitely uh, benefited from this information and they would be inspired to learn more about radiation based treatment and its various applications in the field of food processing uh, if you like this interview please share it with your friends colleagues family members Do like the video and feel free to leave a comment. We would love to hear from you. Do subscribe to our monthly e-newsletter for the PMFM scheme and follow us on our social media handles. Links for the same have been provided in the description below. Thank you so much.